Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today we want to speak a little bit about the uh, Shikoku Hemro, uh, specifically speaking. Um, as we said before, if we were to um, do some a survey on the street, stop and ask Japanese people what they think is the most famous pilgrimage in Japan, uh, invariably, uh, a great majority of responses would say the Shikoku Henro. So it's very worthwhile for us to uh, have an understanding of it. Uh, the Henro is related to Kobodai Shikukai, who we've spoken about before in relationship to uh, his pilgrimage to China, um, and also uh, the fact that he's considered to be uh, still alive uh, in his tomb at the Okunoin on Mount Koya. Um, Kobodai Shikukai, and we use the word the phrase Kobodaishi uh, when we're speaking about him in saintly terms, uh, in Kukai when we're speaking about the man, the priest uh, who lived in the Heian period. Um, Kukai uh, is believed to have been from Shikoku, um, and he's believed to have done ascetic practices at two locations. Uh, he said he did ascetic practices specifically at two locations in Shikoku. Uh, that is, uh, on Mount Taidu, uh, and uh, on a cape that extends out into the Pacific Ocean, Cape Muroto. Um, in particular, um, as I mentioned before, he's known to have done uh, an ascetic practice dedicated to um, the Bodhisattva Kokuzo, uh, and one that uh, allows you to memorize texts, um, the Kokuzo Gumon Jiho. Uh, so in his own writings, Kukai only speaks about these two locations. Uh, he doesn't talk about 88 temples. Uh, he doesn't talk about wandering around the island in terms of ascetic practice. Um, those will be things that will be associated with him later. So there's really no historical basis for an association of the priest Kukai with these 88 locations. So as you look at the map, you can see uh, the pilgrimage is formed by 88 temples in kind of a rough circle going around the island. Um, most of these temples are related to Shingon Buddhism, but not all of them. There's a couple of Zen temples, uh, Imperial Land temples, uh, that are scattered in there uh, as well. The entire circuit uh, is um, about 1,200 kilometers or 800 miles, and it's existed in that form since roughly uh, the Edo period. Um, that said, uh, in the Edo era, um, other pilgrimages, such as the Saikoku pilgrimage, um, were uh, more popular. Uh, so the Henro has come to displace other pilgrimages uh, in terms of popularity to emerge as the number one uh, pilgrimage uh, in Japan. How you go about uh, doing the Shikoku Henro is completely a function of your own um, desires, really, uh, your, your own methods. Um, you can do the journey uh, in a single uh, circuit, now, that is to say hit all 88 temples uh, in a single shot, uh, or you can break up the journey uh, based on uh, prefectures. There's four, four prefectures, so um, go to the temples all the temples of one particular prefecture, uh, or you can split it up uh, however you wish. Uh, that's completely up to your discretion. Likewise, uh, the means in which you accomplish the pilgrimage, uh, whether it's uh, walking, which is the rarest form, using a bicycle, going by motorbike, um, going uh, on a tour bus um, with formal tours, uh, or the most, <clears throat> excuse me, the most popular method, uh, in contemporary Japan, and that is uh, just traveling uh, in your own personal car. So there are a range of common symbols and accoutrements that we associate uh, with the Henro that really allows us to kind of identify Ohenro-san, or pilgrims uh, on the Henro, uh, from a distance. Um, but there are two kind of main themes that um, we can see across the board. The first is that of ascetic practice. Um, the idea that uh, accoutrements kind of represent the sorts of things that priests would take when they're engaging in wandering ascetic practice. Uh, things like a, a staff, um, a, a bag to carry uh, their religious items, uh, and so forth. Um, that's the first. 
Uh, and then the second is a whole range of death-related symbols. The idea that kind of the pilgrim is um, resolved to complete the practice or die, as we've seen uh, in themes in, in other contexts like the, the Hie Kai Hogyo, um, uh, the notion that one is kind of dead to the world as they engage in the pilgrimage uh, and so forth. So white is the color of death, uh, traditionally speaking, uh, in Japan. Henro garments are likewise white. Um, the staff is considered kind of a makeshift grave marker. Um, the the pilgrim shirt or hakui could be like a, a burial shroud or like a, a death garment worn uh, in a funeral. Um, uh, and even the uh, distinctive sort of uh, straw hat uh, that's worn uh, is considered like kind of a symbol of, of, of a coffin and so forth. Um, we've talked about Goshuin Cho, um, the, the, the books that receive uh, stamps from temples uh, for pilgrimages specifically. Uh, that item is called a Nokyo Cho, um, and it's a very common accoutrement for, for the Henro. Uh, with pilgrims receiving uh, 88 calligraphies and 88 stamps uh, in their Nokyo Cho. Um, then, after they've completed the pilgrimage once, um, they use the same book and, and have uh, additional stamps laid over the top uh, of the previous ones. Now, why do the Shikoku Henro? What are the basic motivations uh, for people engaging uh, in the practice? Um, well, there's a fantastic range, as we've discussed uh, in class. Um, we can look specifically at recent diaries uh, published related to the Shikoku Henro uh, to see an entire range of themes. Um, one big theme uh, in pilgrimage generally, but also found with the Henro, is the idea of healing, um, whether it be uh, physical healing from any sort of uh, malady or disease, um, but also kind of emotional and psychological uh, healing is a uh, super important theme uh, as well. Um, there's a common expression uh, related to Henro lore uh, using the term uh, Shikoku Bioin, that is the Shikoku Hospital, the idea that the pilgrimage is uh, a cure for whatever ails you. Um, but sometimes we, we can understand that the, it's kind of strong medicine. Um, that you can actually become addicted to the cure. So there's also a common expression, shikoku bio, uh, the shikoku, literally the shikoku sickness, which implies um, becoming addicted to the pilgrimage, uh, kind of addicted to the, the medicine, addicted to the cure, if you will. In basic Mahayana Buddhist philosophy, that is uh, Daijo Bukyo uh, in Japanese, there's the notion that uh, engaging in ascetic practices produces merit, um, and that merit uh, can be transferable. Um, traditionally in Japan, uh, lay people would give food offerings to monks uh, to support them, but also to receive merit back in return. Um, with respect to the Henro, this is called uh, Osetai. Um, it, it's been an important part of pilgrimage traditions, and uh, lay people will sometimes seek out pilgrims to give osetai to them uh, in order to receive some benefit back to themselves. Now, something that's really interesting is uh, use of the term osetai is kind of dropping out in favor of omote nashi, which is kind of a, a big term promoted with the new Olympics, um, which has much more of a feeling of uh, kind of hospitality rather than kind of the religious uh, overtones of osetai. And finally, uh, thinking about the Henro in the big picture, and I think why pilgrimage studies is so awesome, uh, just consider the fact that uh, how much uh, pil pilgrimage traditions change and evolve over time. Um, for instance, uh, pilgrimage dogs are now a thing. Uh, that didn't exist when I first started studying the Henro uh, 15 years ago, but now routinely every time I go out and do field work uh, in Shikoku, I'm seeing uh, pilgrim dogs, and some pilgrim dogs like this uh, poodle uh, even have their own YouTube page if you're interested. Uh, really a great topic for further research, uh, animals uh, participating in pilgrimage.